Welcome to Topic A, everyone. I'm your host, Gary Perna. This week on Topic A, I'm joined by State Representative Jerry Knowles, who represents the 124th District. We're going to talk a lot about property tax reduction, reducing the size of the State House, the budget, which will be coming up very, very soon, and so much more. You don't want to miss this Topic A here on WYLN. Stay with us. All Care Home Care, the health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice for your care. Call us and we'll be there. Penn State is right here in the Hazleton area. We're top ranked by corporate recruiters. We have four year degrees, so you can finish here or at another Penn State campus. There's new scholarship money available. And there's no application fee when you visit here. Penn State Hazleton. Download your application fee waiver at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. The Beer Garage, 202 East Diamond Avenue in Hazleton. More than just beer. Coffee, all sizes, only $1. Get your lottery tickets here, too. Stop in today. The Beer Garage in Hazleton. At Whitetail Preserve, they pride themselves with giving their guests five-star service. They are now open for lunch six days a week and offer limited delivery service for lunch to businesses in Cunningham, Valmont, and Humboldt Industrial Park. Call them at 570-384-2314. Welcome back to Topic A, everyone. I'm Gary Perna, joined by State Representative Jerry Knowles. And Jerry, once again, thank you so much for, for coming up and, and talking with us. You were here when it, there was still snow on the ground. Uh, yeah, and uh, we were talking before. Uh, we, we were wondering whether or not we had enough material, and we ended up <laughs> that there were many things that we didn't have the opportunity to cover. But yeah. Gary, it's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, you guys do a great job in, uh, in keeping the people well informed of uh, everything that's going on in the region and uh, certainly appreciative of that and it's always, uh, it's always good to be up here and be with you. Oh, thanks, Jerry. And, and of course, very, uh, very busy in the Schuylkill County area, uh, in your district, um, a lot going on. And I want to dive right into reducing property taxes. This has been something that has been talked about for many, many years. But it seems like we're getting closer to that point. Uh, the new governor, uh, Governor Wolf, is saying it's one of his priorities to uh, rid property taxes to a point where they're not so high putting them on some other things. So there's been some bills floating around. Uh, so what's been going on in, in the House as far as that? Well, in the House, the bill that we dealt with, uh, it, it, it's too hard to explain in terms of the system and the mechanics, but it was basically a House Bill 860. But as crazy things happen in Harrisburg, that mm -hmm. bill was actually put into another bill as an amendment and uh, it ran. Uh, it ran in the House, and it uh, it was uh, it was passed by by a bipartisan uh, bipartisan mm -hmm. group. Uh, we sent it over to the Senate, and now we've got to see where they go with it. Uh, I had serious reservations about voting for the bill, simply because it was not what the people want that I represent. Right. The people that I represent want total elimination of the school property tax. That mm -hmm. would be Senate Bill, House Bill 76, and I intend to continue to work with Senator Argel and all of my colleagues in this area right. to push towards total elimination. Uh, this bill, uh, what it does is it increases uh, the PIT, the personal income tax, mm -hmm. it increases it from 3.07 Mm -hmm. to 3.70 or 3.70 and it also takes the sales tax and it increases that from 6% to 7% however it does not expand the base okay. the things that are taxable will continue to be taxable right. but it will go from 6 to 7 uh, that uh, those two changes will generate somewhere in the area of 4.9 billion dollars 
Okay. All of those dollars would be used for reduction of school property right. taxes. The $4.9 billion, uh, they talk about uh, an average of a 50% reduction in school property tax. But that would vary from, through, from, right, from district right. to district. It could go from like 38 up as far as 60, 70. Mm -hmm. So there would be a variance in terms of what, how those numbers would work. Right. But as I said, it's 3.07 to 3.70 and 6 to 7. $4.9 billion is a lot of money. And right. uh, I'm sure people would appreciate the opportunity to have uh, their school property taxes reduced. Right. But again, there's always a concern, Gary, that if we don't, as Dave Argel puts it, drive a stake through the heart of mm -hmm. the school property tax, that there's always a chance that it could come back. You know, we would, uh, we would uh, increase these two taxes and then down the road somewhere, a, uh, a school district would decide that they were going to uh, increase mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the property tax again. And, uh, what I did, Gary, I actually had introduced an amendment uh, that would have required a referendum. Mm -hmm. It would have to go to the voters before they could increase the tax within the school district. Unfortunately, that amendment failed miserably. and. Uh, Quite frankly, uh, you know, I wasn't an easy yes. I was very reluctant because I had concerns that this would be the final product mm -hmm. and that we would not get to the point where we have total elimination of school property taxes. Uh, I've got some assurances that this is going over to the Senate and hopefully what they can do is gut and replace it and put in Senate Bill, House Bill 76 and send it back Right. And we would then get a vote on total elimination of school property taxes. Uh, I will tell you that I would have serious reservations about voting yes right. on this particular piece of legislation if it came back as it was sent over. Uh, because it doesn't accomplish the goal and people, uh, people make no bones about it. Mm -hmm. We do not want reduction, we want total elimination of school property tax, nothing less. Right. But people recognized that this was a vehicle that we could send over to the Senate, that they could put Senate Bill 76 into it and, and send, send it back to us. Now, we're only uh, six months almost uh, into uh, the governor's uh, term. You know, we're, and he was up here uh, a, f a couple weeks ago talking about <coughs> property taxes, you know, about uh, re reducing them. You know, and a question was asked, you know, would he be fully behind eliminating altogether, finding another way to do it, like House Bill and Senate Bill 76 uh, did when, when I've talked to you about it, I've talked to Senator Argo about it. You know, is that a reality that we could see maybe before anything else hits the floor that we can see that bill come back up and say, all right, this is now what the Republican-controlled House and Senate are doing, and we want complete elimination, and we've got to find it elsewhere. Well, the governor, uh, as I said, I've, uh, I've been to the mansion. He invited us out uh, to meet with him mm -hmm. in groups of 25, 30, both Democrats and Republicans. And I, I tell people, the governor is a very likable guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you sit down and have a conversation, you gotta right. like him. But uh, I tell people that he's pretty slick. I mean, uh, what he did was, in the course of the meetings that we had with him, he heard loud and clear from the members of the legislature that property taxes are important and it's something that we need to see gone. So we actually, uh, you know, he actually, he grabbed onto that and uh, he's been talking about reduction of school property taxes. Uh, the difference is that the plan that he has, which is similar to what mm -hmm. I voted on, uh, the difference is that only like 30% of those dollars would go towards mm -hmm. reduction of school property tax. Then the remaining 60 or 70% would go into new spending. Okay. He's looking at spending more dollars. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the budget later, but uh, my feeling is that if we're gonna do something, each and every penny, each and every penny right. that we generate from the PIT and the sales tax should be backfilled into reduction or elimination of school property tax. Each and every penny, it should be a, what they refer to, it should be revenue neutral. Right, right. 
Right. There should be no gain in terms of increasing taxes to, to spend them elsewhere. That money should go towards the elimination and reduction of school property tax. The governor's not looking at doing that. He's looking at taking the largest amount of those dollars mm -hmm. from the increase, and then he wants, to, he wants to use it on new spending, and that's just, that's just totally unacceptable. So do you think, uh, quickly before I go to break, do you think we could have something resolved before the budget? I would, uh, I would think that something may happen before the budget. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what would happen. Uh, I don't know how the governor would react if indeed uh, we were able to get Senate Bill House Bill 76 onto his desk. I'm right. not so sure he would sign that. Uh, okay. I know Governor Corbett would have signed it. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get it to his desk. Right. But I would have serious reservations. But, you know, uh, people continue to... Uh, raise objections to what's being done right now and okay. the governor got the message in terms of the issue is on people's minds right. property taxes i don't need to tell you gary that people are being taxed out of their homes right and no. you know particularly right. our senior citizens they work all their lives to build up equity mm -hmm. in their house and they never really own it right as long as you're paying that tax you never really own your home all right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk about the budget quick, and we're going to talk about reducing the size of the state house, something that uh, could be controversial. We'll talk about that when we come back on Topic A. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? Well, I'll never forget it. One minute, we're talking about going to the movies, and the next, Maggie could barely speak. It was a stroke. I thought I was going to lose her. But I never saw doctors work so fast. Anyway, she's coming home tomorrow. I just hope she doesn't yell at me for killing all the plants. <laughs> Discovered a Pennsylvania you never knew existed on WYLN TV 35. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. For all your projects, large and small, Bedrock Gardens has it all. They are fully stocked and ready to fill your order. Rubber mulch and rubber curbing to match. Lots of color choices to pick from. Wall stone, natural stone, full pallets ready to go. Their bins are full with rich colored quality mulch that will look wonderful all season long. Finish off your fabulous outdoor space with their quality patio furniture and easy to assemble fire pits. Everything you need for your summer projects. Delivery available or just stop by and they will load you up. Bedrock Gardens, locally owned and operated. Call today. Join us this week on Let's Talk Car Project. You'll meet Deanna, a very busy lady with a very busy job who was suffering from some fairly significant back pain until she met Dr. John. Now she's feeling so much better. Her story this week on Let's Talk Car Project. Join us.
Welcome back, everyone, to Topic A. And before the break, we're talking about property tax reduction. Now, uh, Jerry, real quick, I want to talk about the budget. I want to spend two or three minutes on the budget. Um, you know, Governor Wolf proposing his first budget, uh, increase in spending, um, maybe an increase in revenue, depending on what happens. Um, is the money there, uh, you know, and are the votes there, you know, and what's going on right now? Because we're, we're, we're getting to the wire. It has to be done by J June 30th. Yeah, it's, uh, we go back in the session uh, on, on Monday, and I think that's when you will see the serious work begin. The budget process, as you know, the, uh, the governor gives his address, then you go through a series of hearings. Mm -hmm. They would be appropriations hearings in the House as well as in the Senate. And then uh, after those hearings, then that's when the leadership sits down and they begin to right. talk and negotiate. And, uh, because they, uh, the budget never ends up being the budget that was proposed mm -hmm. by the governor. I mean, especially his budget. I mean, his budget increase is spending uh, $4.7 billion. He goes from a $29.1 billion uh, spending number to $33.8 billion. That's $4.7 billion. Uh, just to put that in, 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 in perspective, I mean, uh, you know, during the uh, during the Rendell administration, over a period of eight years, that went from 20 billion to 28 billion, yeah. and then over the four, uh, you know, well, that was eight years from right. 20 billion to 28 billion, and then over the four years of the Corbett administration, it 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 increased slightly from like 28 billion to 29 billion, you know, which is still a billion dollar increase, right. but uh, but uh, th this guy uh, again the money that, that he would uh, generate, any money that would, he would generate in new revenue right. would go into new spending. I mean, uh, you talk about increases, uh, he wants to give more money to basic ed, more money to higher ed, more money to human services, corrections, aging, agriculture, health, uh, DCNR, DEP, DCED, with very few except exceptions. Right. He wants to give more money to, to everybody and it's just, you just can't spend what you don't right. have. And there's no, you know, looking at the budget, there's no new, mo any new money coming in is going into new spending. It's not reducing any debt. It's not taking care of programs that are already on the books. It's all, it's all new. Now, with that being said, you know, he wants to tax, uh, put a tax on natural gas drilling in the natural gas industry in Pennsylvania, you know, which there currently really isn't much going on. But again, that money's coming right in and going right back out. It's not reducing anything. Well, let, let me just real quickly run through. We're talking about $4.7 billion mm -hmm. in additional spending, okay? Uh, the personal income tax, the PIT, if it would be increased from 3.07 to 3.7, uh, that would generate somewhere in the area of $2.4 billion. Mm -hmm. Then the sales tax with the expanded base, he's going to go, uh, some of the things that are currently tax exempt would be put, you know, yeah, yeah, would, would, right. we'd have new items that we'd be paying taxes on. But the sales tax goes from 6 to 6.6. Right. And that would generate $1.6 billion. He wants to put another dollar, uh, on the cigarette tax, mm -hmm. he wants to tax uh, chewing tobacco and cigars, and then the severance tax. Uh, you know, he's talking about uh, increasing that. Uh, currently, there is basically, uh, uh, you know, they 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 always were reluctant to call it a tax, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it it's 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 money that's being it's going right. back to the local local areas for the right, most right. part. But he wants to basically increase, uh, when he gets done with what's on it now, and what he wants, it, it goes up to like 7.5%. That's 7.5% increase. Wow. I mean, I, not increase, but that would be the total. Right, right. Uh, I guess he wants to do a, a 5% tax on the natural gas value, and then there's another like 4.7 cents and that would be on every thousand cubic foot of gas. So it's kind of complicated, but the bottom line is that we would go to, if not the, one of the highest severance taxes in the country. That would wow. go to a 7.5% tax. And, uh, you know, and then he wants to, you know, he wants to increase borrowing. 
uh, and and uh, I know that what he wants to do, it, it's just not going to fly. Uh, there's got to be some compromise. Right. There will be some compromise. Uh, you know, they've told us, don't make any long-range plans for vacation. Right. Plan on being here for the summer. Uh, hopefully that's not the case because I think it's only right and only fair that, you know, we, we, have, uh, we have an obligation right. to have a budget yeah, done. Yeah, the deadline. We've done that. We've done that in, uh, for the last four years. And I'm hoping we can continue to do that. We can okay. have a we can have a reasonable, right. on time budget done by uh, done by June 30th. All right. And I want to switch over to uh, one of your bills that you're very passionate about, reducing the size of the state house. Uh, you, you know, we have one of the largest state houses uh, around, and, and your bill takes some people out. And you know, I mean, some representatives may be a little reluctant to vote on it. They may be losing their jobs, but you know, uh, uh, is it a cost saving? Well, it is, it is a cost saving, and, and really, uh, it's not a big cost saving. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's, not a, it's not a game changer in terms of the budget, when you look at the whole budget. Right. But I think that we need to lead by example in, in, in you know, cutting the size of government. Uh, the original bill, and that's where the number comes from, House Bill 153, the original bill goes from 203 to 153, that's mm -hmm. 203 to 153, but then that was amended in committee to 151, and that's a long story. Uh, originally, <laughs> originally when, uh, when they were drawing up the House seats, the original intent was that there were supposed to be 201 seats. Okay. Didn't have computers, didn't have the technology we have today. Right. So I guess about five, six o'clock in the morning, they count up and they say, whoops, Right. And it was like, we're tired. We're going to bed. Yeah. Let's let it at 203. So that's that how it, it got to be 203 as opposed to two, 201. And now what we're doing is we're kind of correcting that mistake and we're going to 151 seats. If so it, why, why reduce it to 153? Well, 151 is going to be the final. Or 151, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, cost savings. Anytime you can cut costs and lead mm -hmm. by example, that's good. But I, I think that uh, when, you, when you really think about it, if you've ever been down there when we've been in session, it, it's kind of it's mm -hmm. pandemonium or what, what's the word you would want to use? Chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a, is that the right word, pandemonium? I would, I, well, yeah, pandemonium, chaos. <laughs> okay. I would say, I don't well, know. anyway, that's not a word I use a lot, <laughs> but uh, it, is, it is chaos at, at best. And I think if you, if you make it smaller, uh, you know, it increases from somewhere around 62,000 to 83,000 in terms of the people that you would represent. I think that's very manageable with society mm -hmm. today, with the technology, with the right. iPhones, with the iPads, with the email, with the Facebook, with all of that stuff. Right. Uh, it's a much different society that, that today than it was many years ago. And I, I, I believe that I don't like to say, I, I don't like to use the word manageable because nobody manages anybody in terms mm -hmm. of, but I think it just makes it easier to work with 151. It makes it easier to build consensus. Right. Uh, I, I, I just, and there's no magic number in, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of the, uh, of the 151 or the 153, but uh, right now, currently, the ratio with the House and the Senate is there are usually like four House seats and one Senate seat. Right. Okay, okay. somewhere in that area. So we go from four to one to three to one. Okay. You know, it, it would still be it would still be very reasonable, very Right. Manageable. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna take a short break when we come right back. I have one more question about reducing the size of the state house. Find out what it is when we come back on topic A. It always feels good to pull my own part. It saves a lot of money, too. I've never actually pulled it before, but I think it's time. It's environmentally conscious, and it can be a lot of fun. If you're a do-it-yourselfer who's up for an adventure, then come out to Harry's You Pull It. Pull your own quality recycled auto parts for up to 90% off the cost of buying new. Savings like that will keep more money in the bank, which could lead to even greater fun. Harry's You Pull It. We got used.com.
home should be filled with the ingredients that most inspire you. And let relaxed sophistication fill the air and the walls around it. Find beautiful cabinetry finishes and details that capture your personal style. Craft made. It becomes you. Call, click, or visit your local craft made dealer today. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicapped accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. There are packages available to fit anyone's budget, restaurant, and catering on site. Our facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor, and private parties. Call 570-384-2314. This week on Women Today, we honor the memory of our dear friend, Dr. Jerry Shepperson. And what better way to do so than to talk about how important volunteerism is in our community. We're joined by Lori LaSant, President and CEO of Community Services for Sight. We'll have the Simply Homebrew Wine of the Week. Kathy's gonna cook up a great meal to go with it. And we're gonna talk a little bit about our friend and mentor, Jerry Shepperson. That's what's coming up this week on Women Today. And welcome back. Uh, before a break, we were talking about reducing the size of the state house. We kind of went through a little process of passing the house. It's sitting in the Senate. You know, Jerry, could we see this happen? And the process it has to go through, we have two minutes and 30 seconds left. The process it has to go to before it becomes reality. Okay, the process, and I'll make this as quick as possible. Both bills, reducing the size of the house and reducing the size of the Senate, mm -hmm. were voted out of the house, sent over to the Senate. The Senate now needs to vote on both those and approve both those bills as they are. Mm -hmm. That would be in this session. Okay. There would then be a notification that would go out as to what's going on to, right. I think it's one newspaper in each county. The next session we come back, the same legislation, exactly the same legislation, has to pass in the House. Both bills go over to the Senate and then it goes to the voters in a referendum, a statewide referendum. Okay. The voters, the people who pay the bills, have the final decision. That's a very important part right. to this. We are basically putting the people in Pennsylvania who pay the bills the opportunity to decide if they believe the Senate and the House should be smaller. Okay, and you know what? It, that's a great point. You know, you, you put it out there, and, and the House and Senate they have to vote for it, uh, giving the people who are paying your salary mm -hmm. the chance to say, "Listen, we want it, we want a smaller house. We we you know want, we want less of this. We want, we want more direct work done." You know, is is a big thing. Closing minute. Okay, I'm going to ask you the tough question: Will we see a budget on time? Will it pass before the deadline on June 30th at midnight? Wow. I hope so. If I knew the answer to that question, <laughs> I would be the fire chief in McAdoo and Klein Township. <laughs> I really don't know, but I, I, I can tell you that the House of Representatives, uh, particularly the Republican caucus, uh, we think is very important that we have an on-time budget, okay. an on-time balanced budget, right. which controls spending. All right. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for coming in. I, you know, I always say when I have Jerry Knowles on the show, I wish I had an hour-long show. We just have that much to do. I invite you back after the budget is done. I know you're going to be busy for the next month. So I invite you back after the budget, and we'll talk about everything that happened uh, through this process. So, is, that, Jerry, is that because I talk too much? Well, I, I don't have to talk a lot when I have Jerry on the show. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for watching Topic A. We'll see you next time. Have a great night.